Yes, uh, it is available in YouTube. Okay, so note down this topic first, we will go as per the content, right? So we are going to discuss about inbuilt data structures in Python, okay? So next two modules, which I've already created in Moodle, uh, I have not added any questions yet because uh, I have not started the topic. So after today, uh, in the coming uh, classes, you will be uh, able to see certain questions based on uh, today's topic. So mostly uh, based on list and uh, tuple, okay? So at least some seven, eight questions I will add uh, by Monday. So please uh, see Python programming um, uh, course in the model. And uh, if there is any new content, you can uh, find that new content and uh, in your free time, start solving the questions. To make most of the uh, things that are being you know, available in the model uh, regarding Python course. Fine. So what do you mean by uh, this data structure you already know, right? Data structure you are already studying in C. So the, uh, basically, it is a way of storing the data in a memory so that we can access in a particular way properly, right? So we are going to learn about stack, queue, linked list, all those are uh, available in C. But in uh, Python, when it comes to Python, same, same concept, but we are calling them in a different names. For example, list. So list is just like an array. So you can think list is nothing but an array in a Python. Okay, so what is the conditions you need to remember? If you want, you can make a note of this uh, sentence. So list items are ordered. Ordered means, you know, right, how the array works. Array starts from the uh, starting index zero. So, and it goes up in the increasing order. So zero, one, two, three, four, like that. So indexed means what? They the elements are stored in the one particular order. So the first element will be stored in zero, second elements will be stored in one, two, three, in that order. So that is called as indexing. And it can contain mixed data items. What do you mean by mixed data items? It can contain string, float value, integer value, character value. So it, it can contain any type of data within it. And most importantly, changeable. So also called as mutable, very important term. Please remember that list items are mutable. Mutable means you can change the existing item. Suppose at second place, there is 10 value which is stored. I can delete that and I can replace with 20. So that is called as mutable. Okay. You can change the existing items in the list. And uh, what is one more point? It can also have duplicate items. Duplicate items means I can have one, two, one, four, one again, two again. Right. So this is called as duplication. So list items can have multiple items with a similar value. So that is the important conditions for list so when it comes to list first thing that you need to think is it follows the indexing it can have any type of data items can be deleted or added at any time and it, items can also be duplicated right it can have a duplicate values right this is list the first one second one what is second one tuple so tuple items are also ordered ordered means it also follows indexing unchangeable this is this is a very important word so what do you mean by unchangeable Tuple items, once they are added, for example, so one, two, three, four. These are the items which are present in the tuple. Unchangeable. What do you mean by unchangeable? You can add new items and remove existing items. That is allowed, but you can't change the existing value and replace with the another value. I mean, you can't modify their only. Suppose if I want to uh, access this particular index. What is the index of this? 0, 1. So if I say tuple of 1 equal to 10, if I write like this, this is not allowed. Why? Because it is unchangeable. You can delete and insert new item at this place. That is allowed. But you can't modify the existing item. So what you are trying to do? You are trying to replace 2 with 10. That is not possible in the tuple. So please remember these conditions. Without this, you are not able to solve uh, no further a uh, lot of problems will be asking uh, if you don't have foundation you'll get a lot of confusion so please uh, uh, understand the points whatever i'm saying so tuple items are ordered indexed but unchangeable unchangeable means existing item you can't modify but you can delete and add new items so what do you mean by delete and add suppose i can delete entirely two 
and at the at the place of uh, two i can add a new item that is possible i mean first you have to delete it completely and it can also have duplicate items okay that is to pull so third one is set so what is set set items are unordered so unordered means suppose i have stored the data in this particular way one two three four okay when it comes to array all of you know that if i want to print array the output will be always in this order only yes or no so output will be always in the uh, indexed order so every time if i print the array value it will give me one two three four only as the output but when it comes to set every time i print the set it may not be one two three four suppose it can be one three two four also it can be two three one four also correct so what do you mean by that every time you're trying to access the set items you may not get the same ordered output so that is called as unordered unordered means there is no fixed order in which the way you are accessing the data so similarly set items are unchangeable unchangeable means as i explained in the tuple you can delete and add new item but you can't modify the existing item so what do you mean by unchangeable in simple terms say for example my name is arun now what i want to do is uh, I am already working in GRIT for an example, right? Now what I am saying to the management is I want to change my name and update my name as something else, right? Change Arun to Abhi, Abhilash, for example. So that is not possible. So what is possible? I can go out, somebody else can, else can come in my place. That is possible. But I can't say that I want to modify my name and, and, I, and I still want to work in GRIT. So that is not possible, okay? So you can delete completely and uh, find the new value but you can't modify the existing value and update it to the new value, okay? And most importantly, set cannot have duplicate items. That means if the values are one, one, two, two, it cannot be called as a valid set. It is an invalid set, okay? So in set items, you cannot have duplicate items. It doesn't follow indexing. So it doesn't follow indexing. Finally, dictionary. Dictionary is what basically, dictionary items are ordered. Again, just like uh, list and tuple, they are ordered. They follow particular indexing and dictionary items are changeable. That means you can modify the existing data, but you cannot have the duplicate items. This is most important. You cannot have the duplicate items. For example, all of you might be using the dictionary, right? Say there is a, uh, for example, college. You are, work, you are studying in college GRIT. So here, the college is called as a key and this GRIT, GRIT is called as a value, key value pair. We call it as a key value pair. So that is called as a dictionary. Dictionary items are stored in a key value pair data. So we will be having a key value for that key corresponding value. Okay. Similarly, if I say section. So say for example, CSC underscore C. For example, this is my section. So this is also key data and this is a value data. Now, if I, if I try to put one more data, CSC underscore C like this. So this is going to be invalid data. That means you can't have a two key value pairs which are same. You can't have a duplicate key value pairs. So that is not allowed in the dictionary, right? Changeable. What do you mean by changeable? Suppose I want to update the section details of some student. So instead of C, I will make it as CSCD. That is possible. You can change the corresponding section data, but you can't have the two key value pairs where both the details are same. Key is also same and value is also same. That is not allowed. But changing of the data is allowed. Which data? The value data is allowed, but not with the I, and you can delete the key value also that is also allowed but uh, you can't have a duplicate key value pairs in the dictionary so these are the some of the constraints which you need to know when you are working with the four data structures in python okay so i will once again repeat them uh, as and when we are going to you know explore the problems examples but this is a basics right so list means from now on keep this thing uh, this uh, keep these points in your mind right so uh, list means indexed ordered right allows duplicates and it can contain mixed data tuple means same ordered it can have duplicate data but unchangeable set data means unordered unchangeable and cannot have duplicate right 
So set items are unordered, unchangeable, and cannot have duplicate item. So just like complete opposite of set is uh, nothing but a list. List complete opposite is set. Dictionary means it will be stored under key value pair. Okay, key value pair. So these are some of the fundamentals for data structures in Python. So what I'm going to do now is everything we will explore one by one. So you please concentrate. Uh, at the end of the session, we will uh, take the question and answer uh, uh, Q&A session. That time you can ask the doubts. Please make a note whatever doubts you might be getting in this uh, uh, topics. Okay. Fine. So first let me complete list. After list, I will take a small, uh, small poll uh, and I will uh, just launch the poll. I will test your knowledge, whatever you learned till now. Some five, five, five questions. That's all, not more than that. So be, be ready for the poll. Okay. First thing that uh, comes to your mind is what is list? How to create a list? Yes or no? So how to create a list in uh, Python? Very simple. Just like how you create variable, you need not to mention uh, any keyword or anything like that. Just like how you declare variable. So directly, if you write a equal to 10, this will declare variable in Python, right? Similarly, you can create a list as simple as that. Okay. So here we have a list name. How to create the list? Please remember lists are created using the bracket symbol okay please uh, write down this important uh, no, note list has to be created using bracket symbol okay so similarly tuples are created using what is this this is square bracket this is a normal bracket sets are created using flower bracket okay and similarly uh, dictionaries are uh, created using uh, flower bracket but key value pair so these are three important uh, special characters which you need to remember. This is for list. This is for tuple. This is for set. Okay. Similarly, for dictionary also we are using flower bracket, but we are uh, within that we are using key and value pair syntax. That is this colon, key value, and value pair. Each of them are separated by uh, comma operator. That I will explore later. Okay. So lists are created using square bracket. That is the statement I've written here. So here I've created a basic list. The list name is uh, GRIT equal to, see the bracket symbol has to be there and each value has to be separated by comma operator, right? And uh, as you can observe, there is a duplicate items, 30 is repeated, yes or no, 30 is repeated twice. And it is also having 20.5, which is a float data. So list can have a combination of different data type. So if you want to know whether it is a list or not, you can print the type of the, uh, whatever the name you have given. So print type of the GRIT. So you can observe here what it is showing, the name as the class list, right? So for your confirmation, whether you created list or not. So you created the class as list, okay? Then here one more list I've created, which is a combination of different strings, separated by comma, but if mentioned within the double quotes. So string should be specified in double quotes compulsorily. So how to print the list? Just give the name name of the list in the print statement, print GRIT, print section. And if you want to know how many elements are there in the list, you can use the length function, print length of GRIT. So you can see the answer is seven I am getting here. Okay. So this is all about basics of list, uh, how to create a list. Then obviously when it comes to creation, the next thing is what? After creating what you need to do, you need to access the elements, you need to modify the value, do some operation. So this basic uh, uh, you know, fundamental is, again, is very important to understand. So if you are thorough with the slicing concept, this is not a uh, you know, difficult thing to understand because you already learned slices in the strings. So the to access the list items, the basic syntax that we are using is slicing. Okay, so you, either you can access the individual element directly or you can use the combination of different elements using slicing. So here I've created one list called as IPL. We are having certain elements here, right? Which is a string list. So here when I'm writing print IPL of one, so this is just like array, right? All of you know. So IPL of one means obviously which element I'll be accessing? SRH. See, for example, the output I'm getting is SRH. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, correct? So IPL of one is giving me the SRH as the output. Similarly, IPL of minus one. So all of you know that in, uh, in the last class, we discussed about negative indexing. 
what is negative indexing i can access the elements both from forward direction as well as backward direction so negative index starts from minus 1 minus 2 in this order it goes positive index 0 1 2 so this is the important difference you need to know so negative index doesn't start from minus 0 it starts from minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 but uh, the positive index starts from 0 and goes in the incremented order so when i type minus 1 obviously the last element i am accessing so what is the last element lsg so that i am printing then this is obviously all of you know already i'm just revising this so if th those who have missed the class you can understand so what is this first value ipl 1 colon 3 so 1 means including that element 3 means excluding that element as simple as that okay so what is the first element we have 0 1 right so first element is 1 so i will be printing 1 that is srh then and i'm going up to 3 so what is 3 kkr right 0 1 2 3 but am i printing that kkr value in the output no so that's why i've told so one means including one three here excluding one in the slicing here we are including that element and from this side we are excluding that element okay from whatever the index we are mentioning so some people are still making the mistakes they are including that one also so please understand that okay so one means including the on the left side including that index on the right side excluding that index so similarly you can access so if i don't mention anything here it starts from by default zero so that's why it is accessing here printing from zero up to three so that means uh, this one this and this will be printed similarly print ipl2 to end that means i am not going up to the end so uh, this is a negative index all of you know i am starting from minus one and up to going up to minus four minus four means minus one two three four am i printing that srh here in the output Right. So how this output is uh, printed? Can anyone tell me? So this is minus one, two, three, four. So I am starting from minus four and I am going up to minus one. That means I am not printing this LSG. So I am printing only these three data: SRH, CSK, KKR. So this basics you need to be thorough. Okay. So basically, how to access the list item is uh, just you can remember that if you using slicing, you can access it. Not a big thing here. And this one. I hope I discussed, I don't know whether I discussed or not, but uh, I'm just revising once again. So there is a concept of double colon also. Okay. So it start, there is a start value. There is a stop value, right? Start, stop and increment value. How many steps you are incrementing? So this is called as uh, double colon uh, slicing. So what do you mean by here is, see, for example, in this thing, uh, I'm starting from first value. What is my first value? Two, right? So two I'm printing and I'm going up to 10th index. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that means uh, in the increment of three, right? So obviously I have less than uh, eight values, but I'm going up to 10th index. I'm going in the incremented order of three right that means a step of three so that's why after two what is the value i'm getting on the output five why i'm getting five here because see the step of three from this position one two three that is third including the third element so that's why i'm getting five after five what is the next element i'm getting third element step of three six seven eight so this is also called as double slicing that means you can give the terminating criteria for example i will modify this yes so i have modified this before that uh, you can try this also so here what i am not given the start value stop value but i have given the step value i am printing the data with the step of two right so that's why for it is giving the output from the step of two so rcb csk lsg why it is printing rcb csk lsg can anyone tell me here though i don't have uh, this data from where i am fetching can anyone tell me yeah you can unmute and answer so from where this data is coming 
from list from previous list from previous list sir yeah so this thing somebody asked me actually sir uh, in your notes you not type that code but uh, how it is coming here so in the jupiter notebook though you are working in a different cell right you are working in a different cell here though you have not created this particular data rcb csk lsd so we are the jupiter notebook is fetching this data from the previous cell correct only thing that need to be uh, you know you need to be careful is whether this particular ipl list is there or not for example if you, if you go to the previous cell obviously there is ipl list so it is fetching from the previous cell so it, it is not mandatory to type everything under one cell and uh, you know uh, understand so you can split your code into multiple cells and uh, have a clarity in your code so that anytime you refer you need to understand by yourself so here i am getting the data rcb csk lsg with the step of 2 right so step of 2 means uh, first i am getting rcb is printing then the, what is the second data csk then from here from csk what is the second data lsg so that is in the forward direction similarly i'm going in the reverse direction step of minus 2 step of minus 2 means here minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 in this order first i'll print lsg then step of minus 2 means which one will be printed csk then again step of minus 2 means rcb so in that order you can access so this is called as double slicing so double slicing is also important criteria you need to remember when it comes to accessing the data in a different order and uh, one more important thing is you can access the list items easily whether it is present or not uh, directly without too much complicated code you can just find that particular element if it is there in that particular list so in this particular code what i am doing i am just checking if this data if dc in ipl i am just checking if there is any team called as dc in ipl in the double quotes right so you can directly check whether the element is there in the list or not. So we are see how much simplification we are doing here. So the same thing if you want to do in C for loop means you will be traversing and checking the uh, DC with uh, each other string present in the array one by one, correct? So here we are having a simplified code for that. Okay, so here if that is present means you can print otherwise, you know, we will we'll, we'll, uh, display that the item doesn't exist. That is checking whether the individual element present in the list or not. So what about this statement? How to access the list items at a time? Now I don't want to access the elements one by one. I want to access the at a time. So you, you can use for loop for X in IPL, right? IPL is a list now. Just like string, you can print that value separated by tar space. Similarly, if you don't want to use for loop, you can use while loop. So how will you use while loop? Because you don't know how many elements are there in the list, right? First, you need to find out the length of the list. So initially, I starts from zero. Then we go up to the length of the IPL. Then we are printing the each data in the list using the index IPL of five. Then we are incrementing that particular data, uh, the index, right? So in that way, you can access the list item. So they will ask all these uh, kind of simple questions in the codes, right? How do you access the list items? Is there any way to access the list items without for loop can you use it only with the while loop so you should be knowing the alternative ways also okay so there is something called as list comprehension so all these things see whatever i written here in the previous code to print the data this one you can do it using the single line that is called as list comprehension. So I want you guys to explore more about this. I will be adding a lot of problems, okay? I don't want to go in depth about it. I want you guys to try it by yourself. So what is list comprehension? The syntax is the list name you need to mention, expression you need to give for keyword, item, item in iterable. So obviously it has to be iterable. What do you mean by iterable? Whether you are able to access the elements in that particular data structure one by one, one, by one or not. So that is called as iterable data. So you will be iterating only if the condition is true. So new list, I for I in IPL, print new list basically. So I'm just, if there are elements in the IPL, that data I am accessing one by one, okay? So basically, what, what is this code is doing? If there are elements in IPL, it is copying all those elements in the, into the new list. 
simple we are creating a new list from the existing list okay so if you print the new list so you are getting the same data as there in the ipl right so everything copying from one list to another list you are doing within the single statement so that is called as list comparison so please remember this explore more problems based on this so you can do a lot of logical operations and all those things so advantage of list comparison i'm just showing here see we are doing something here for i in l this is one more list if i mod 2 equal to 0 print i basically i'm checking whether it is an even number or odd number okay so in this list if it is divisible by 2 then i'm printing that value same code this code we are replacing with a single line see here so what is this expression should be there expression is i then for keyword should be there for then item so whatever the expression you given that one only i for i in l right for i in i table i table means list so yeah what is the list name here l for i in l if what is the last thing here condition what is my condition i mod 2 equal to 0 correct so this entire code is replaced by single line so such kind of things uh, you can do it using list comparison where there is a small logic which you need to implement within a larger code so you need not write big codes for that within a single uh, uh, line you can implement uh, this kind of concept okay So yeah, this is also one of the example, right? So what we are trying to do here, can anyone tell me? What we are doing in this line, line four? This is also list comprehension only. So expression for I, for for keyword, what is the expression item and what is the list name? What is this line doing? See, whatever variable you choose here, that same thing should be used for iterating the uh, list. So I dot upper for I in IPL, right? If you use different uh, variable here, it won't work. So be careful with that. So what is happening here? What is the output of this code you are getting? Already output is there, but I want to explain it. So here in the list, we are putting all the elements of IPL. If they are not SRH, if it is SRH, in place of SRH, we are keeping DS, DC. Okay. What is this line? We are printing the list. So we are iterating over the list, right? There is if there is the list right with the keyword srh right so what we are doing that we are replacing that uh, particular value alternative value right so basically i'm just telling you the advantage of the list comparison so a lot of such small small logics you can implement with the list comparison so if i keep on telling you you will be, you will be getting a lot of such examples so i want you to try this uh, multiple questions queries regarding List comparison. Okay. If you explore, you will get it, not an issue. Anyway, I'll be adding some questions. Ah, so the most important point, this is the most asked question. When you say you are uh, good in Python, you will be getting these kind of questions in the interview. So please don't uh, no, uh, forget this, uh, whatever the important conditions I have told you. What do you mean by that? List items are mutable. Mutable means you can change, right? So here we are having the IPL team, right? So what I've done in the second line, IPL of one equal to Deccans. So what I've done is SRH name, this is one, right? I've updated it to Deccans, yes or no? So this is possible in the list. That means existing data I'm modifying. Am I adding the new data? No, that is also allowed. But here in this case, am I adding the new data? No. I'm trying to modify the existing value. So SRH has been modified to Deccans. So that is called as mutable. So mutable means existing data, we are able to successfully update it. Just you can think updation. Similarly, this is also mutable thing. So what I have done, I have given some values team A and team B to the IPL list 
for the index starting from one up to three. That means the team name starting with index one and up to three are updated with team A and team B. So that is why you can see RCB is as it is, but uh, the SRH and CSK are changed to team A and team B. The remaining are as it is, they are not modified. So these are all called as mutable uh, examples for the list. Similarly, here what I have done, do I have a exact number of values to update with the SRH and CSK? See, for example, team A has been, SRH has been changed, uh, changed to team A, CSK has been changed to team B. So two inputs are there, two modified values are there. But in this case, I want to modify the data from three to five, but there is only one value, correct? So that means I want to modify from the third index up to fifth index, but I don't have the enough values. So what will happen? Your list has been reduced. Yes or no? Initially, how many elements were there? RCB, team A, one, two, three, four, five items are there. At this point, third, what is the third item? Zero, one, two, three, right? That means KKR has been modified to team X. But to replace the LSD with the another value, I don't have a value in this thing. So for example, I will add one value here. So you can see that now we got the updated value or not. So we have enough values, so we are getting the correct data. But when there are no enough values, what is happening? Your list size is reducing. So then you need to be very careful when you are updating. So five items has been reduced down to four items. So when you are modifying the list, you need to have enough data to update the existing value. Correct? This, this is the question about how to access. So three things you learned till now. How to create the list, how to access the list item, right? How to access the individual element, how to copy it to the another array, another list. Then how to check whether the list items are mutable or not. Correct. So this we understood. Next, obviously. So when it comes to array, what you will think first? How to create array, how to initialize the array, how to access the elements of the array. But what we are missing before accessing, how you are inserting into the existing array. I've already created some array, right? For example, I want to insert some more elements into that. So how will you do that? You already know that in the data structure you are learning. So similarly, how to modify the existing list and add the new content into it. So there are a lot of inbuilt functions for that. So many of you are using that to solve the problems. So it is not a big thing to learn, but you need to know what are the functions that are supported to insert the elements into the list, right? So some of the basic or most important, if you say uh, those things I'm mentioning here, remaining, if you know anything extra inbuilt function, you can learn, not an issue. So here we have a same list, but what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to add a new item to the existing list. So please note down all the syntaxes. So what is this uh, function name I'm using? Insert. For that, you need to mention the list name, obviously. What is the list name? IPL dot keyword you need to use. Then insert function. Insert function accepts two parameters. First one is the index where you want to insert, then the value. So my index is to value is RR, right? So what will what will happen here? At the index two, the RR will come, and whatever the values that were present from the index two, they will be shifted to the next to incremented order. That's why you see the updated list. What I am getting here: RCB, SRH, RR has been updated. Remaining all are shifted to the next position. So it's, it is as simple as that. Okay. So that is using insert function. Here there is one more function. What is this append function? Right. So append function doesn't accept two parameters. It accepts only one parameter with the value. And obviously when you say append, what does it do? It will add the whatever data you're inserting in the end. By default, it will add in the end. It is just like Q. You right? You are standing in some theater to purchase a movie ticket. You are standing in a queue means, suppose if you come late, obviously you will be standing at the end. You won't go and uh, no, uh, stand somewhere in between. That is not allowed, right? So append means the data will directly come in the end. It won't be inserted anywhere in the middle. So that is append function. And there is one more function called as extend. Okay. So extend means you have already one uh, list. 
that list you want to combine with the another list. Okay, there is one more team here, IPL2. This is IPL1 and IPL2. Here I'm having some other data, GT, Punjab or something like that. So here I'm extending IPL1 with IPL2 data. So that is the extend function. IPL1 dot extend in the bracket, I'm mentioning IPL2. So you can see that updated list has been RCB, SRH and along with that, this extra content has come. So this is called as extend function. These are most important ways to insert elements into the list okay so if you have any other examples you can learn it not an issue so insert is over correct so uh, remember either if you know append insert or extend mo more than enough in the, in the beginning level right or one more way is what is the one more way i told you mutable example i told you right so what is this one more way you can directly mention the index in the index of the list and update with the new value that is also possible but uh, which is the better way this is the better way right you can insert at exact position using the append insert and extend with the new content then similarly uh, how to delete elements from the list correct so if you have learned uh, stack and queue already you will be knowing about push and pop operations you might you might have completed those topics so it is similar to that so here you can you can replace or delete the particular item by the remove function with the mentioned key so if you want to remove that particular data you can remove directly that is allowed along with that there is one more important function in the uh, list that is called as pop okay what is pop which with this keyword you might have already learned right anyone knows what is pop delete the element deleting element which element it deletes from the queue? Top and queue or stack? In that last stack. inserted element. Delete last inserted element. Pop comes in queue or stack? Stack. Stack. Stack, right? Very good. Okay. So here, uh, there are two ways to use pop in the Python. Okay. So you can either mention the corresponding index. So what does this do? Pop deletes the specified index. IPL.pop. In the bracket i've given to pop deletes the specified index right that means which element is deleted which element is deleted okay now you tell me what will be the output of this code anyway i'm not showing that output right up to here what will be the output what will be the final updated uh, list here which one is rcb is there RCB, SRH, KKR, LSG. RCB and SRH. SRH. Sorry, sir. KKR also is there. No, right? So you need to be very careful. See, you are deleting two elements simultaneously. You have deleted three elements, in fact, right? You have deleted CSK. After deleting CSK, what is your updated uh, list? This is your updated list RCB, SRH, KKR, LSG, right? then from this updated list you are deleting the index 2 so what is the index 2 here 0 1 2 kkr so you are deleting the kkr also so rcb srh and lsg are pending now in the fourth line ipl.pop i have given here what is my pending list rcb srh and lsg so when you don't mention the index the list will delete which element the last element by default please remember that so that means it will delete the LSG. So the remaining elements are RCB and SRH. That's why in the output also you can see I'm getting RCB and SRH. So you should be very careful. Okay, what I think? Yeah. The way you are deleting the elements, you should be very careful with that. So some people will, some students will confuse with that. Every, all these things are operating on the original array, original list. No, every line it is. That's, you know, referring the previously updated list. So you should be manually solving these things to have a clarity. So apart from that, you also have a delete keyword. You also have delete keyword for the uh, deleting the elements from the list. So for that, you need to use the DEL keyword, DEL only, all in a small letter. Then the list name in the square bracket, the index value. So what is the index that you want to delete? So here you see after this, why I'm getting only RCB as the output? Because up to this point, my remaining elements are only RCB and SRH. So if I delete one, the remaining element is RCB, right? Then 
I'm printing the data. See here, again, I am deleting, appending one more uh, value with the existing data. So just append function, which you already see. But what is this delete IPL? What does it do? It deletes the complete list. So if you don't mention any index, that complete list is gone. So you are totally deleted the list from the memory. So you need to mention just the list name with the delete keyword, DEL keyword. So to delete the entire list from the memory. So for example, if I print that, so you can see so I'm getting some error here. Why I'm getting this error? Name IPL is not defined. Why I'm getting this error after this? At by this line, the list doesn't exist in the memory at all. Correct? So you need to be very careful when you're deleting the elements. And similarly, you can create an empty list also. Here, what I've done, I've created an empty list. Then I'm copying each element into the list one by one. Just example here, I'm copying these characters from the string one by one and appending into the list, ipl.appendi. Then I'm printing that. Suppose I, I randomly inserted some data. Now I don't want that data, but I don't want to delete the list also. What is the function I need to use? ipl.clear. Okay, ipl.clear. That means, I mean the list.clear. So basically, you don't want to delete the uh, list, but you want to clear the elements. Okay, so you are just refreshing your phone. Now. It is just like that. You want to delete the existing data and uh, keep it original as it is. So please remember all these keywords. So tell me what are the functions you learned one by one. I will list it here. For example, what is the first thing that I told you? Insert function. Is there any other function we used? Append. What else we used? Extend. Very good. Remove. Extend. Then? Remove. Re remove. Then? Pop. Pop. Delete. Very good. Delete. Delete. Clear. Correct. Anything else? So if you know these basic functions, it is more than enough to solve any problems for you. This will cover inserting, this will cover deletion, this will cover, uh, you know, delete. suppose if you made, made some mistakes, just clear the content of the list, right? So these are some of the functions that you need to remember when working with the list data. So list is just like an array. So just remember that it is just like an array, but the way we are doing uh, in the uh, Python is a little bit different. Okay, so I'll give a small break. In this break, let me give you a poll, so which you already solved. So many of you solved the questions. Those who are not solved, uh, for them specifically, I'm telling, please attempt these poll questions because those who are inter interested, they are already solving even before I explain the topics. So that is the uh, enthusiasm we to have, right? But at least when I'm uh, putting the questions, open and see once, right? What is that you try? So don't uh, miss out on the content that we are you know, putting it on for your uh, you know, benefit only. Because uh, we are doing a lot of activities in future. So we'll come to know the importance of all these things. Okay. So don't wait until our instructions. Just from your side, try it uh, honestly. If you're not able to solve, no problem. We are not going to judge you. But we will see whether at least you are, so, you are attempted or not. See, so many students are attempting. They're getting two marks out of 10 uh, error. So we don't uh, consider it as not attempted. We will consider that attempted only. But we we at least see that some students are trying. And we want that kind of uh, no, uh, effort from your side. Okay. So somebody has. Okay, I'm launching a poll question. So just uh, try them. Five questions are there. Be ready. Okay, try. Hope it is visible. All questions are visible, right, guys? So I'll give five 
at least seven minutes i'll give you okay so most of them are uh, small codes okay so let's understand because they might be coming on the same line you can't add a uh, content properly in posts so please find it if you are getting any doubt you can ask me Do it by yourself, right? No problem if you're getting error. Over guys. Pop function. Yes, yes, I was talking. Okay, the last two minutes.
Okay, I'm closing the poll. Okay. So any doubts in this poll questions? They are simple only, but I just wanted to know how much you learned the previous topics. Okay. Right, so what it is doing? Multiplying the string by into two, into three, totally six times, right? So majority have given the correct answer. What is the output of the following? Yeah, so see, these things I want you guys to be careful. So many of you given that it is valid answer, right? 33. So you are trying to mix variable one plus variable two plus variable three. So in, in basically when in the print function, when you are concatenating, right? So the concatenation operator that is plus, right? Basically it works only when the data items are of similar type. If they are of different type, this concatenation will not work. Please be careful that. So can we use the else block for for loop, correct? This I had explained in the I think, last to last class, right? So you can have else block after for, it is not an issue. So basically it will print just as like a normal code, but many people have given the wrong answer here also. So the foundation is very important. Yeah, so this comes under what type of slicing? Could I explain now? Double slicing, double slicing. Sir. Double slicing, but uh, do we have a stop condition here? No, sir. So can someone tell me in which order we are accessing? Are we accessing in the forward direction or in the reverse direction? Reverse, reverse direction. Reverse direction. Reverse slicing. Reverse slicing, right? So here we are having reverse slicing, but without termination condition. That means I am starting from minus one, correct? Minus one or two? Two. Two, sir. Two. So what is minus one? It's a step. 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 Minus one is a step. Start from two. So two means uh, this is k zero i one. This is two. I am, I am starting printing from the character n, which is second character. Then I have to go in the reverse direction of minus one. So you have to be very careful. When there are two columns, you need to see the condition. So I have to go in the reverse direction. So in reverse direction, I'm going up to K. Why I'm going up to K? Because there is no termination condition. Suppose if I mention here one, what will be the output? If I mention like this, what will be the output? Will it be same? Should be yes, sir. Two starting from two, one minus one. What will be the output? Only n. n sir. Only n or n nine? Only n. Only n. So that also you need to be very careful. This is a terminating criteria, excluding that value. Suppose if I mention 10, I have to traverse up to nine only. So please be careful with that. Then the last one. See here, there is a lot of division here. Majority of you given correct, but still, Many people have given this answer as the correct. See, purposefully I have given this question. I want to test your foundation. So here, it is a simple question. If you know the for loop, you can easily answer. But the quiz questions, they will confuse you with this kind of uh, simple only, but uh, you won't give the importance to those criteria, right? You will ignore, okay, this is simple. I will select something. So here, uh, 56 people have selected this one, but 91 people have selected this one. Both are both set of students might have learned it properly, but only few of them have given the importance to the each criteria. Here, the correct answer is this one, correct? This is also correct, but there is a no semicolon here. So you need to go back and find out where is the issue, okay? So for I in range, 10 to 
15 i am going again this is just like slicing start criteria step criteria terminating criteria in the range function 10 comma 11 comma 12 comma 13 comma 14 so can anyone tell me why there is comma here after the end those who have learned it properly because of end equals see every data should be ended with the semicolon right so how to overcome this i don't want the semicolon I want space or I might want semicolon, but I don't want after end. After 14, I don't want semicolon. So we can use separate function. Separate function. Separator, right? So we have a CP in the first class I discussed. Any other method you have? So try that one. Okay. So what is my question? Keep the code same. I want comma also, but at the end, I, what I'm getting here, I don't want that. I that is basically I want just this as the output, not from this code. You can use any other separator. Somebody told that might be one solution. So is there any other solution from your side? You try it. Okay. Oops. Okay. So there are there is a uh, some cell is there in our JRIT. Uh, those from third year, they want to conduct some activity based on Python for the first years. Okay, so they will do it in the coming days. So I have given them the instructions uh, what they want to do. They might want to do similar activity like uh, some quiz uh, they want to conduct for all the uh, people who are, uh, who are taking Python such courses. So they will conduct in the coming days, right? Python uh, quiz, maybe some programs they might give or some assessment they might conduct from their uh, innovative cell. Some group is there. I, I will inquire what is that. It is newly formed uh, cell, just like uh, your uh, you know, advanced uh, um, that uh, INC is there, no? similar to that. So they will conduct uh, some activities based on Python only in the coming days. So what they will do is uh, they won't ask all these uh, the advanced questions or something. Just they will, whatever I am covering in the syllabus, based on that, they will be conducting the activity. So please prepare whatever I have covered till now. Go back to the starting from the first topic. Uh, keep uh, studying whenever you get a time, apart from your regular academic subjects. So in maybe in next one week, uh, they will keep one uh, act activity based on Python. So I will introduce them also. So the students are only able to do this kind of activity. That means they know in detail about Python. Okay. So they will come up with the in 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 uh, no, innovative questions, whatever I am just showing you, you know? not as simple as that. Some other questions, basically, based on interview, those kind of questions, they, they will make you practice. They will make you learn. So students are also are involving in you know basically making sure that everyone learns properly. Fine. So there are some more topics uh, uh, related to list. I will just wind up with this, right? So some important inbuilt function also you should know when it, when it comes to list, right? Up to now, uh, I was mentioning you have to use this only. You have to use this condition. But when it comes to list questions, data structure uh, questions. I will give full freedom. You can solve the problem however you want to, because up to now you have covered, uh, you learned most of the things, right? Slicing you learned, for loops you learned, right? Uh, basic data structure, how to use data types you learned. So you can use a combination of all these concepts to solve a given problem. So I don't keep any restrictions. I will just ask you the some questions, right? Problem solving questions. You can use any method to solve that particular problem. So you can either use inbuilt function or you can use the you know, traditional approach, no issue. But make sure you are, so, you are able to solve those kind of questions, okay? So for that, you need to know what are the functions this data structure supports, right? So such data structures, functions, based on this uh, list, tuple, dictionary, you please explore. So some important functions I'm listing here, okay? So if you want to count, right? How many times that one particular item is repeated in particular list, right? So that you can do it using the count function. 
So here, you know, is dot count seven. Which one I want to count? Seven, right? How many times seven is repeated here in this list? Three times. That's why in the output, I'm getting three. Then there is sort function, right? NOS dot sort. So what is the sort function is doing? Just like your basic uh, data structure sorting applications, it is using one of the sorting algorithm to sort the data in the ascending order, okay? So it can also specify the reverse keyword. This you please explore. I mentioned, I will leave, one, leave this to you guys. What I mentioned here, you can also mention two parameter to the sort function. What is that? First parameter is key. Second parameter is reverse keyword. So please explore what is this reverse and key. So if you have doubt, you can ask me personally, but I want you to try this. In this, I, I didn't uh, add key and reverse, but I, I mentioned in the comment line, please explore that. What is that uh, reverse and key keyword? What is the advantage of using these two? Without that, you, you know that it is putting the data in the ascending order. With this, what will be the output? You just try it out. Anyway, this material is already there. So I don't know how many of you are opening and seeing and studying. So please involve day by day. We are the strength is reducing. Those who are interested, they are learning. Correct. So ultimately, see when it comes to the uh, learning, seventy percent is your effort. Thirty percent is entire college, entire faculty, right? Content. Even if I give you hundreds of materials. You will study only if you want to study. That is very important. Okay. So uh, keeping up with the flow and energy is very important. If you, if you fail or oh, so many things, uh, lost up, lost the flow, lost the interest, it is not possible. Because uh, day by day, we are getting a lot of applications. If you see, whatever you are learning is not enough. So even as a teacher, we can't say that I will learn only this. Okay. So we have to be uh, you know, involved every day to learn something new. So please tell your friends also, those who are irregular. They can't, they will be doing the same thing again in the third year. Those who are interested, they will go ahead, right? So please work from the day one. Then there is a reverse function, right? You can uh, put the data in the reverse, uh, reverse order. Then copy, you can copy one list to the another list using copy function. There is a max function. You can find out the maximum element in the list, right? Using max. Similarly, there is a minimum function. So all these are some of the important functions which you need in a problem solving. I am not telling only these are used. These are some of the list important inbuilt functions. So you can you can go to the official Python live uh, you know website and check out how many functions are supported by the list. You will get around 30, 40 functions. In that, I am listing only seven eight here. But uh, I'm just telling you, there are so many functions and those functions are, are also updating every day. It is not like it will be as it is. So you need to be updated with the current uh, you know, uh, data of the, that particular uh, language. And if you want to find out index of some particular element, suppose you don't know what is the index of 10. I want to know that index of uh, that particular 10 value. You can give that value and you can try to find out the index. And uh, just like we have seen uh, in the previously, we are checking whether that element is present in the list or not. So what is this last line? Print four in NOS numbers, right? So if that four is present in the list, you will get the output as a Boolean value two. So this idea will give you how, what, what can you do with the list, right? How many things you can do with the list, this particular cell. So inbuilt functions I have mentioned here, Some inbuilt functions, these are not the only inbuilt functions. Okay. So you can explore more functions based on the requirement. So max and minimum. Okay, can you tell me what is this line is doing? Assigning elements to multiple lists. Right? At so, a time in a single. Yeah. So here we are. Uh, Creating two lists at a time, list one comma list two, and in the bracket we are mentioning the values, and this is the first list, sub, comma separated second list. In the next line, what we are checking is whether all the elements in the list one and list two are separate, same or not, right? So this kind of application also you require based on the problem, right? So this is called a multiple 
you know, creation of the list on the same line. Then there is something called as nested list. Okay, nested list. This also uh, you need to know because uh, some problems are based on nested list also. So what I have done here, within one list, uh, we have created another. There is a main list and inside that there are two lists, nested list, right? So this is first list, which is having some section data and this is some numbers, right? Maybe you can think that IT7 is the subject or department code for IT, CSC5, EC12. Okay, so this concept is also important. Just like nested loops, we can also have nested list. But you can see in the output how it is printed, the way you created as it is, it is printing. Okay. Now, what is this line is doing? Can anyone tell me? Sir, it is like a first index and then first element of it first index. What is the output I'm getting here? Five. Yeah. So this clarity everyone should have. So why I'm getting five in the output here? This is nested list, right? It is like a 2D array. So this is zeroth index. This is first index, correct? Within zeroth index, we have some, some elements, IT, CSC, EC, correct? Within first index, we are having some elements. What are they? Seven, five, 12. Now, what I've written here is, I want the first index data that is fine. Within the first index, there is one more list. In that list, I want the first index value. Correct. So this is zero. This is one. So that means the output I'm going to get is five. So this is concept of nested list. You should know. Similarly, what we are doing in this line. Grid of zero dot index of CSC. What we're trying to print there. From zeroth list right in that we are finding the index element of the values yes so different ways of doing it then the output i'm getting is one and similarly i am checking whether certain element is present in the zeroth index whether it is present in the grid of zero correct grid of zero grid of zero means this particular first list so the output will be true correct so these are the some basic concept of nested list So just like extend function, you can also join two lists by using the concatenation operator. So it is not a big thing. So you can learn it by yourself. So just use plus operator to combine the two different lists. Yeah, this question uh, I have seen in many interview portals. So unpacking in list, please uh, mark it important, okay? So unpacking questions are uh, very frequently asked questions. What is unpacking list? Okay, unpacking list in Python. What we are doing here, can anyone tell me? Just see and tell me because I'm talking. At least let me have some interaction. What you are understanding with the code. Just see the code and um, think what we are doing here. Hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. There are six elements in the list, but there are only five variables. There are six elements in the list, but only five variables. Only five variables. Okay. What did you understand by that? So we are packing like two list, two elements of list into one variable, like KKR and DC. Okay. Is that correct? Others, anybody? Sir, how many variables are available we are storing, sir? And leftover variables are stored in the last one. Yeah. And so, the last one is a pointer type something. Hmm. Yeah, that is the syntax actually. So this star is very, uh, you know, problematic uh, symbol. You are using it at many places and based on the situation, it behaves Suppose if you use it in pointer, it uh, acts as a dereferencing operator. If you use it in expression, it acts as a arithmetic operator, right? If you use it in list, it is having a different meaning. 
So you should be very careful when you are using star, right? Or yeah, star only, right? So it is called as unpacking. Unpacking is basically, if you want to define it theoretically, unpacking means accessing the individual elements from the list and storing it in the separate variables, right? It is just like you are packing all your materials in one dabba, one box, right? Then you are placing them at the required place in your room so that it looks neat. So this is important. Some questions are based on this unpacking. So revise this if you don't know. So here what we are doing, we are having five variables, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. But T5 is having something, somebody told now, some pointer kind of symbol star. So this IPL, I am assigning it to these variables, all these variables. So what inside operation is doing is from the starting index zero, the elements are stored into these variables one by one. So RCB is getting stored in T1, CSK is getting stored in T2, LSG T3, GT T4. Then KKR T5, assume KKR T5. But what about this DC? They have not done anything wrong, right? Why we have to ignore that? So this is an important criteria. When I don't have enough number of variables to unpack the list, you attach star in the end. Just that is general criteria. In the end means the last variable that you have created in the code. So when I make this last variable a star, so what does this star does to the list is any remaining elements that need to be still stored, they all will be stored under T5. And T5 will be treated as a separate list. Okay. It is not a variable. So please be careful. T5 is not a variable. T5 is a list now. So up to here, GT, we are able to store all this into T1, T2, T3, T4. That is fine. But KKR and DC are getting stored in T5. So T5 is treated as a list. Okay. This is called as unpacking. Now I'll remove this. Okay, now you guys tell me. You're going to, yeah. Now tell me what will be the output? Is it same? No. No, sir. It will not be printed, sir. Just tell me what will be the output. RCB, CSK, LSD, GT, yes, KK. CSK. CSK, DC. I trade in error. DC will not be printed, sir, and every element will be printed. DC will not be printed? DC, DC will not be printed. DC will not be printed. Every element will be printed. Then what is the star T2 is doing? Creates another list. Till what elements it will take the data? Up to KKR, sir. See, listen. So RCB will T1. T2 will take all these elements or what about these things? Only CSK and LSG. Only CSK. Okay. So these kind of questions to be very careful. What is output I'm getting? DC will not be printed, someone told, right? So small things only, you will get confusion. So you can clarify your doubts. So CSK and LSG is going into T2. So you can ask me, sir, why CSK and LSG only? So you said after star, whatever elements are remaining, that will go into that list, right? So the compiler is very clever here. It will, before storing the remaining elements, it will check how many variables are there after T2. There are three variables. Now what smartly it is going to do is, it will check after RCB, there are so many elements, one, two, three, four, five, right? Out of five, uh, is there are enough variable to store this data or not? It will check, correct? So obviously there are enough variables, right? To store this data. So I can able to store GT, KKR, DC, right? So it is only taking this first two. Then for these three things, it is going to store those variables in T3, T4, T5. Okay. So let me remove this. Now what will happen? Sir, from CSC to KTR will get into T2 and T3 will be printed as DC, sir. CSK to KKR will go into T2, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. 
what if I do? Here I will print uh, T6, T7. Now tell me. I think only CSK will be in this. Error. Is there any error or is there any data or what? Error. Is there any error or is there any data or what? After T2, there are how many variables? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are exactly five. So does this star has any value or not? Empty list will be printed. Empty. Let's see here. So these kind of questions you need to be very careful. So here it, the list is created, but T2 doesn't have any elements. Why? Because there are enough variable to store the remaining elements. Correct? T1, T1 is printing RCB, T2 is printing empty. T3 is printing CSK, LSG, GT, KKR, and DC, right? So there are enough variables to store the remaining variables, remaining uh, list items. If I print T8, what is happening now? Not enough values to unpack. So this is a very important error, which you need to be very careful. Not enough values to unpack. What is this error? Just check, check the program and tell me. See, expected at least seven. Yeah. Expected at least seven, but got only six. Not enough values to unpack. Very famous error, actually. More values than expected. Sorry, more uh, variables given than expected. Yes, very good. So uh, we are telling unpack more things, store it in the variables. Correct? But there is no data to unpack, right? So it is like this, as simple as that. Uh, I am telling uh, I have purchased uh, you know, the, some big building where I want to have 100 people to live in that, but nobody is coming. Only 50 people are coming. Correct? Remaining 50 are not at all coming. So you are totally wasting the memory, right? So there are no enough people, enough data to unpack, but you are telling unpack. That is not possible. So expected at least 7, but got only 6. How many elements are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? At least 7 we need to have. Right? You forget about T2. But we are having 7 variables to unpack. But there is no content to unpack into those variables. So please note down this error. Not enough values to unpack. Okay? So when you are solving some problems, unpacking based on list, you need to know this foundation. So revise all these things, whatever I've discussed, right? So by Monday or Tuesday, max. Monday, obviously, you need to practice the questions, right? So Monday, please uh, request from the teachers and complete those remaining questions based on uh, strings and uh, slices and assignment problems, okay? So maximum up to Wednesday, those models will be closed, right? Those who have to practice, they have to see, practice, come to me, ask the doubts, clarify the doubts. By Wednesday, all those three models will be closed. Then we will be conducting two more sessions in the coming week. By Wednesday, I will be keeping some questions on list, tuple, sets and dictionary. Right. So I'll be keeping some interesting questions, right, based on this, whatever content we have learned today. So please practice, revise these topics, right. So we will see in the next session. Any doubts if you have, you can ask me. Somebody asked me about uh, pop, right? Who's that? Sir, can you show me the function for searching an element in the list? Sir? Element in a list? Mm, yes. Sir. Count. You can find the index, okay? Or you can just uh, 
using print function, you can check that element whether it is present in, in the list or not. Okay. okay. Sure. Yeah. If the element is not present in the list, uh, will it raise an error? If the element is not present in the list. If the element is not present in the list, it will show false now. Why it will show error? Uh, means uh, is uh, another function like dot find uh, to find the element in the list. Uh, that might uh, give you error. Uh, error. That's what I've told you. No? There are n number of functions to do the same thing. Okay, sir. Mm. So that find function might give error. Pop function somebody asked, right? See, pop by default will delete the last item. Okay. If you mention dot pop, it will de delete the last item. If you mention the value number, it will delete only that particular index. That means 0, 1, 2, 3. So it will delete that particular index value. Okay. See, very simple. Either you want to view the index or you don't want to give the index. So it depends on the question. Any other doubts? Okay. So you can use any function, just make sure you are understanding whatever you're using. Like somebody asked me about find function. No? That is also valid. I have listed for Keeping every student in mind, I've listed only a few functions so that they don't get confused with the multiple function. But uh, if you're interested, you can explore, not an issue. Okay, fine. We try to access the index and list more than the size. Yeah, this will definitely give an error. This is just like array, right? When you say there are five elements and you want to access 10 element, 10th element, it will display some garbage value. Okay, guys, please uh, practice the questions. Come and meet me if you have any personally any doubts in the placement of this, you can meet me, not an issue. Before coming, just text me, okay? Fine. See you in the next session. Yes, ma. Thank you. Happy weekend. Happy learning. Yeah. <laughs>